Hey guys, meteorologist Danielle Grant here in my home coming to you for a quick science lesson today. I know outside you might be looking at a little bit of sunshine. We've had some beautiful warm temperatures, 60s and 70s, but the weekend is coming. Easter weekend, of course, and I am tracking snow. So that's why I thought let's chat about the winter weather that we usually see here in Colorado. So yes, snow is on the way. Right now it looks like it's going to push into the Denver area Saturday night through much of the day on Sunday. So how do winter storms form? Don't mind Walter over there. He of course found his squeaky toy right when we get our lesson started. Walter, the kids need to learn without you squeaking. All right, well, he should stop pretty soon, right? I'm going to take your squirrel and we're just going to put the squirrel over there for you. Okay, back to work we go. So how do winter storms form? So when you look at the entire Earth, we have colder air up closer toward the North Pole and we usually have warm, moist air mass further to the south near the equator. That cold air, sometimes it can slowly move further south and sometimes that warm air slowly meets and pushes further up to the north. Now, when these two air masses collide with each other, it's like they go to battle. And who is going to win? Well, that is determined along the front. So we have cold fronts, we have warm fronts, we have stationary fronts, we have occluded fronts, but we're just gonna talk about the cold and the warm fronts today. So this is what a storm system looks like. Usually the winds around it are rotating counterclockwise. You get that cold air coming from the north, coming from the North Pole, and then that means that the cold air is pushing closer toward the warmer air, and really it just shoves it out of the way. That colder air takes over, and that's when we really have the cooler temperatures that settle in here. Now there is warm air, and that is pushing up from the south typically, and usually it's so warm that it is able to ride up over the denser, cooler air. So the cold front, that usually brings us all kinds of precipitation, some of it in the form of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and snow. So I really like this graph because right here, this is the freezing mark. All these clouds have those tiny ice particles in them, the ice crystals, all that snow. Well, it starts as snow, but then once it hits the warm air, air that is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns to rain when it falls all the way down here to the surface. Now things get kind of interesting when you have the snow, it hits the warm air, so it turns to rain, but then once it gets really close to the surface, it encounters colder air. So when that happens, the rain falls, it freezes then on all kinds of surfaces. So trees, cars, the ground, it really can be a problem. And that's when we call it freezing rain. That is not fun to deal with. Then we have sleet. Sleet, of course, starts as snow. It hits the warmer air, it becomes rain, but not for long because then it hits the colder air and that is when it becomes sleet as it hits the ground. Sleet can kind of bounce on the ground and it accumulates very similarly to snowfall. And then, of course, snow at the very end, winter weather, which is what we're talking about today. And that's when you start off with the freezing ice crystals at the very top of the cloud. It creates the snow, and then it continues to move all the way further down to the ground as snow because it encounters that colder air and it stays cold the entire time. So what are snowflakes? Have you guys ever been outside during a snowstorm and looked at one of those snowflakes? They are so beautiful. Not one single snowflake is alike. And they're made up of 200 ice crystals. 200 ice crystals, isn't that crazy? They of course form in the clouds that are below freezing, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And each snowflake is six-sided. As the snow crystals get bigger and bigger and bigger up in the clouds, gravity is what pulls them down. And that is what brings them to the surface. Sometimes we can have such intense, long lasting snowstorms that we call them blizzards. Have you guys ever been out in a blizzard? They are kind of crazy. There is some technicalities though when we talk about a blizzard. A blizzard has to have 35 mile per hour winds or stronger. The visibility, how far you can see, has to be a quarter mile or less. That's not very good visibility. It makes driving really, really tough. And then 
They have to last for longer than three hours with those two key ingredients. You can see these people trying to walk around in the blizzard, walk with their groceries. Doesn't that look miserable? Luckily, it doesn't look like we are going to uh, be dealing with a blizzard on Sunday. However, it will be a bit windy, but right now it just looks like a couple of inches here in Denver. Fingers crossed, right? You guys ready for snow? Well, if you've been watching the forecast, sometimes when the storm moves in, we bring you winter storm warnings, watches, and advisories. So what that means is the National Weather Service, they are the ones that issue all of these advisories. And this is what you see when we're giving the forecast on Nine News. So a winter storm warning, that's everywhere in red. That usually means it's going to be the most dangerous part of the storm. They're gonna see the heaviest snowfall out there and the most dangerous conditions. Winter storm watch, you can see right there out I-70 moving into Kansas and then parts of Nebraska, kind of under that bluer shade. That means you got to watch out. Not quite as much snow, but still is going to be a problem. And then we have the winter weather advisory right now in this graphic. It's up in the mountains where it doesn't look like they will see quite as much snow out there. So first we have the winter storm warning. That means take action now. That means the storm system is expected to come in within the next 12 to 24 hours or it's happening right now and dangerous weather conditions are expected. Then we have the winter storm watch. That means get ready because we as meteorologists think that it's pretty possible that we could have some pretty dangerous winter weather out there. Heavy snowfall and strong winds within the next 12 to 48 hours. So that means potentially within the next couple of days. Then last on the list is the winter weather advisory. That just means be alert because winter weather conditions are expected to cause some inconveniences to you. If you're not cautious, these situations should not be life threatening again. This means you're gonna have a couple of inches of snow. It's not gonna be great to be driving around, but you probably will be just fine. And then, this is what we do as meteorologists. How much snowfall will we get? That is the biggest question we get. Obviously, when a snowstorm is on the way, people wanna know how much is going to stack up in their backyard. So we look at four different weather models. The first one, the European. Then we have the North American mesoscale model, the global forecast system, and then the rapid precision mesoscale model. So these are the snowfall amounts that these particular models are looking at for a storm that moves in Saturday night through Sunday. So I have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. With this, the RPM model is what we call it, we're still too far out. So right now I can't get a number on exactly how much snowfall this particular model is going to be bringing us, but each one of these have their strengths and their weaknesses. And it's my job as a meteorologist to look at all of these different models and then come up with my own forecast, what I anticipate us seeing here in Denver. And right now it looks like probably one to three inches just because it has been so warm around here, but we do have a big cool off coming. So right now, if I had to give you some numbers, I'd say about one to three inches coming here to Denver, some higher amounts if you live further out to the west. All right, it is time to have some fun, guys. I want you to help me make a snowstorm in a jar. How fun does this look? All right, so we're gonna need a couple of things for our experiment time, and hopefully, Maybe mom or dad could help you out and you can get some of these uh, items that are in your kitchen or maybe in the bathroom. We need Alka-Seltzer, we need some glitter, water, white paint, some baby oil, and maybe a bowl. I forgot a bowl. So I have all of my ingredients out over here in my kitchen. So we have the baby oil, I got gold glitter because it's my favorite color, the Alka-Seltzer of course. We have the paint right here. This is white paint that I just found under my uh, kitchen sink. Of course we need the jar. <laughs> I forgot about that. We definitely need the jar. And just for safety reasons, maybe a plate because we might have some exploding snowstorms going on. First, we're gonna take the baby oil and put probably about three fourths of the jar full of the baby oil. So I'm just, Squeezing it all in there. Oh, wow. Hey, that's just about as much baby oil as what we need. See, this is why you need um, 
the plate. <laughs> the plate helps everything. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna have to wipe my hands a little bit. So I have my baby oil in there. Uh-oh, Walter's like, what is happening, mom? Don't eat the baby oil, Walt. I don't think it's gonna taste very good. Now that we have the baby oil all over the place, <laughs> let's take some of this paint. Probably, you know, I wanna stir it up. Throw a couple of spoonfuls in here. And then, since my water is right here at the kitchen sink, we'll put just a little bit in there. Stir it up. Stir it up real good. Okay. I'm gonna put this paint water mixture in there. Do you kind of see it at the bottom? Pretty cool. Okay, so we got our snow down there. Now is the fun part. We are talking about putting a little glitter in because we gotta have some festive looking snowflakes, right? Ooh. Kind of looks like Christmas in there, huh? Okay, now that we have our glitter in the jar, it is go time. And again, you wanna make sure mom and dad are helping you because like we saw with the baby oil, this might explode too. All right, I'm gonna get the Alka-Seltzer tablets out and we are going to make a snowstorm. All right, I'm gonna put one in there. See the snow? It's kind of twirling around in there. Oh, wow. Look at all the glitter flying around. It's like our own little mini snow globe. How fun is that? I'm thinking maybe we do need another little Alka-Seltzer. Cause I mean, it's snowing, but do we want to see like a blizzard? Like real crazy snow? <laughs> Let's see what happens when I put another couple of tablets in there. Woo! That is awesome. You can see all the glitter kind of moving and swirling around just as if we were in a snowstorm, which we certainly will be seeing on Sunday as this winter storm moves into much of Colorado, bringing us kind of a taste of winter on Easter Sunday. I know, we should be out in the sunshine, hunting for eggs, but you might have to deal with the little snow as you're on your Easter egg hunts out there in your backyard or your front yard. <sighs> well, this is pretty cool, guys. I hope you're able to do this. If you have any questions for me, let me know. You can put them on the comments uh, and I will get back to you. And as always, I would love to see your final project. So have mom and dad take a picture of you with your snowstorm in a jar. Woo, I think it's, it, it really wants to go over. All right, how about two more? Uh-oh, these are covered in baby oil. <clears throat> you see, my storm is rising to the top. Whoa! Look at all that glitter. Getting pretty awesome. All right, guys, there it is. Snowstorm in a jar, too fun. Okay, I hope you guys have fun doing this. I hope you learned a little bit about the snow. And once you do this project, take a picture. And then on Sunday, I wanna see you actually out in the snow. So post them on my Facebook. Hope you guys are doing great. And we'll see you back here real soon.